Hello and welcome to this short poster presentation on monitor policy shocks and inflation inequality. I am Christoph Lauper. I'm a PhD student at the University of Lausanne, interested in macroeconomics, monitor policy and international economics. And this is joint work with my colleague Giacomo Mangiante, who is in Lausanne as well. Now, in order to talk about inflation inequality, we have to talk about individual infl inflation rates, and we calculate those with the help of individual consumption baskets that we combine with item level price data. And with this, we want to answer three questions. First, does monitor policy influence the distribution of individual inflation rates? Secondly, does it have any redistributional consequences across demographic groups? And thirdly, how, how, what is the impact of inflation inequality on the inequality of real variables, such as, for example, consumption? First of all, we have to calculate individual inflation rates. Here you can see the official inflation rate for the United States. And if we compare this to our individual inflation rates, you can see that they are, there are vast differences both across time and across households in inflation rates. And we want to exploit this. In order to do so, we will use a standard local projection approach that is based on Yorda 2005. We use monthly US data for, uh, for the period 1981 to 2007. And we use instruments, and uh, namely the Romer and Romer shocks of, of their 2004 paper that we update until 2007. Now let's get right to the results. Um, this is the standard IRF for a low income group. And the inflation rate you can see decreases in, uh, in the four years after a contractionary shock and we compare this to a high income group. Here you can see that the average inflation rate where this, uh, where this IRF starts is actually uh, lower for high income groups than for low income groups, but we can see a high degree of convergence across the two inflation rates after a contractionary monetary policy shock. This directly results in a decrease in inequality that we can measure, for instance, with the standard deviation across cross-sectional inflation rates. And you can see that th this is highly significant and also very persistent across four to five years. Now, this has implications uh, not just for central banking, but also for uh, the, all the research on real forms of inequality, such as, for example, consumption inequality. Here is one result of the Koibin et al. 2017 paper, where they find that a monetary policy shock increases consumption inequality. But they only control, uh, they only deflate by, a, uh, by an aggregate inflation rate. And if we control for the differences in inflation that we saw, we can see that about a third of the effect vanishes. These were the three main point, points to summarize. We saw that the individual inflation distribution significantly decreases after monetary policy shock. So inequality as well as dispersion decreases. And we also saw that low income households inflation decreases more. So their, their inflation rates are more reactive to monetary policy. Thirdly, we saw that this is highly relevant for real forms of inequality such as consumption inequality. Thanks a lot for your attention and I'm looking forward to discussing this further with you.